Welcome back to another episode of Build Biology, and today we are outclassing ourselves with something that's just a bit above our pay grade. What's up, man? How's it going? Good to see you. Tell it. Oh, yes, I love the awkward handshake. <laughs> Tell us who you are and what you bring here today. Uh, Dave Savaggio, Speed Corps. Got the 1970 Dodge Charger. We call it Evolution. Ooh. Evolution is not only the name of the car, but it's the process that we build it. So, not only is it absolutely massive but it is beautiful. Tell us a little bit about it, starting with the obvious. So the only metal parts is the floor and frame. Everything else is carbon fiber. The floor and the frame. Even yep. the structure for the, the A-pillar and the roof yep, and this everything. Yep, all carbon. And we have a large autoclave. Speed Core is a performance group. We build cars, but we specialize in carbon fiber. And this is basically all aerospace carbon fiber we've done in an autoclave. And it's all done with kind of a little bit of a gold tint from Torre. Uh, everything's in house. And it's kind of the new way that we're designing and building cars. There's no body filler. There's nothing on it. It's all straight super strong, stronger than steel. We're trying to change everything and evolution, yes, it means the car, but it's also the way we're building using technology, 3D printing and carbon. What's the weight difference for the stock tub versus in carbon fiber? So if you had a regular 70 charger, say it had Hemi in it, you're looking around 3,900 to 4,100 pounds. So we're about 3,400, so maybe about 900 pounds lighter than factory. What's different from a stock car? Because I mean, I noticed that uh, the grill surround is a bit yeah. shorter, the bumpers are removed or completely tucked. You used to have a steel chrome front bumper like that with like a, a big lot gap. Of cars from the era, yeah. yeah. You might remember from Fast and Furious 1, that's the way they kind of look. Yeah. So what we did was um, made really nice tight tolerances and kind of got rid of the ugly, if that makes yeah. sense, with beautiful gaps. Yeah, look at the that. The amazing part on this, the 70 grill was great. It used to have a flip up headlights mm -hmm. but we designed this one to look more like a NASCAR kind of grill yeah. so this is actually all carbon fiber and all this mesh you see the chevron is going to continue throughout the car and styling and this is all done out of 6061 oh, aluminum wow. and it's all machined are these new demon headlights uh, no actually we got these from jw speaker it's kind of a unique led and it looks really good with the car I'm yeah happy super with it cool it's crazy how the fit and finish on this thing is like the gap is a hundred percent symmetrical all yeah. the way around and if you look at the weave orientation as the hood goes through the fender, everything lines up perfectly all the time. Wow. So. I don't even, I'm not even sure if I want to begin to ask what the process is behind not only just laying up carbon fiber that fits perfectly, but how you actually go about matching up where the weave lands. Well, there's three ways to do carbon fiber. So you can do it in a wet layup form, which is kind of a cheap way of doing it, but it's good for racing. Second way, a lot of people do infusion, a uh, bag process, the carbon's in there in a mold and it sucks uh, epoxy from one end to the other, and then it infuses throughout the process. Process. What we use here is the same way we they do it on Boeing on the 787s. And this is a pre-preg carbon fiber, and it goes into our molds. We have artisans lay it up and make sure all the lines and the orientation is perfect. And it goes into like a hyperbaric chamber. It's an autoclave. So when you have your weave orientation in the mold, you have to make sure that everything is perfect. Wow. Okay. So it takes a real artisan to know what is that that's, angle and how does it come off the roll that's and insane. how do you put it in there in the part. What else do we got here? I mean, we got a carbon cowl. Yep, which is uh, really cool. flush fit glass. The original 70 had these really bulky moldings of that course, used to yeah. snap on. So we got rid of that. We made the OD smaller. Mm -hmm. So, and you can just use a factory glass in case you ever get a rock Super chip. Cool. I really like the Cerakote. We use Cerakote a lot. Yeah, this and this awesome has got like finish. a bronze finish. Uh, they use it for, originally for guns. Okay, so it's just yeah. a more durable finish or is it like yeah. an anodized process? It's like a spray on anodized. It's cool. extremely thin, extremely durable, and it looks really good. Yeah, so I love the finish. Kind of doing like the, the color of the carbon really well. Yeah, and so we use it on the door handles as well. This is all CNC'd. So this looks like a 70 Dodge Charger door handle, but it's a little bit different. We kind of made it look better with this little reveal, different button and just a different approach. Nice. Let me show you how light the door is. So carbon fiber inside and outside. We painted the jam, but right. It's all carbon fiber. Yeah. Is this as wide as they were stock? Or is this yeah, wide? Yeah, this, this is like the original wide body. Man, look at that, so, yeah, look at that ledge. It's really long and really fat. And it fits a pretty mean tire on the outside. Yeah, 345 in the back, and uh, really happy with that. 345, so, and it, and it spins. Is, you're almost tucking lug nut here. Yeah. I mean, that is friggin' low. And then what else was changed in the back here? Uh, again, flush fit the glass, got rid of the moldings and everything. This body line here that comes down around the window is so cool looking. It's an amazing style that they did. I mean, even in the late 60s and, you know, 1970, of course, that Coke bottle shape. I mean, it was yeah. really a, just a cool piece. And I think that's why the franchises loved it, like Fast and Furious, Dukes of Hazzard, and all that other stuff.
Originally, it had an under uh, valance exhaust, is a little, you know, a little bit smaller, so we made it bigger, come through the valance. We 3D printed the bezel here and kind of put that around there, did it in Cerakote, and then we did this out of stainless. Uh, we machined this to look like a 70, uh, mm -hmm. but we changed some of the detail in the reveal. For the Dodge lovers out there, this you know embodies everything that made the Charger great. It just, we modernized it and kind of cleaned up the lines and just made it timeless. So everything that we want to build, we wanted to stay in style for like the next 10 years. Okay. <laughs> what was the hardest, most difficult process on the exterior of the car? So first we had to build it out of metal and then we had to pull molds off of that and then cut it all apart and then make it all out of carbon fiber and then build it again. So we actually had to build this car twice. And then Made it perfect, painted it, clear coated it, jet black, it was gorgeous. And then we pull all of our molds off of a perfectly built car and then we have to cut it all back apart again. Man, that's insane. All right, well, let's jump into the inside of this thing. I'm excited to peek into the interior. Yeah. So the approach to the interior is we wanted something that was like really flashy, but racy with a little bit of a European touch. This is a truss system. This is all aluminum and it goes all the way front to back and it supports the seats and the transmission. Oh, wow. And this was laser cut and then it was bent on a brake and then it was CNC'd to get that nice angle here. And if you look at the chevrons that are kind of in it there, that's what matches the grill. And then we kept yeah. that philosophy through everything. But it smells like the most rich, brand new exotic car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the floors are all aluminum, and this is it. I mean, there's no sound, you know, deadener, anything in there. Gabe's custom upholstery did all everything on the inside. Oh, I love this. So this yeah. is actually the floor. And then you just add some padding here and for, for grip and styling yep. purposes. Exactly. Everything has like a French stitch here or there. I love this weave that they did on the roll tube. So this is really cool, too. And obviously, this car has a full cage because it's a composite body. So I'm assuming that all of this ties into the frame to help sort of keep this car all together with, with all the composite panels and stuff. Exactly. And this is all machined out of one piece of aluminum, a billet piece. So that holds the gauges, get the gauges wow. from classic instruments. A steering wheel is made out of one block of aluminum. Uh, that was machined and it was kind of a timeless piece. And we tied it in with the classic pistol grip, the shifter 68, oh, yeah. 69, 70. Yeah. And it's really a cool look. It's really awesome. How we tried the, uh... to use like really weird weaves and things in metal, you know, yeah. to really tie it all together with the carbon. Yeah, it's a really awesome modern twist on a classic car. What seats are these? We got these from Recaro and then we make carbon fiber uh, back nice. seats for them. And then uh, Gabe's custom upholstery did all the leather. Combination of the perf leather and uh, the normal. So it's kind of like a coffee interior. What's awesome. cool about this too is it's all billet. So the grab handle and all that, we use a Corvette button to wow, open it up. that is a really so. powerful noise. <laughs> yeah, That right. sounds like quality. We got to peek under the hood of this thing. So this is kind of a hybrid demon engine. Obviously we have a bigger top pulley, we have bigger injectors, everything else. We had to use the front drive off of the Hellcat because the original demon engine has electric rack on it and we didn't want to use electric rack on here. You know, we're getting like 966 uh, horsepower. Out of a pretty stock engine. I mean, this is yeah, a these things hold together factory really well. long block with just some small bolt-on mods essentially, right? Yeah, it's an amazing engine from Dodge. We really like it. And we made it look, you know, like it belonged in this car. In CAD, we designed these uh, valve covers and then we actually made these out of carbon fiber and just kind of painted them. We didn't, and there's so much carbon everywhere, we won't put too much right, carbon. Yeah. This is all 3D printed, this air intake tube. Like there's little details everywhere. So like this little band here, we 3D print that and it just kind of ties everything together. So having that waffle look and right. everything tied together. Is, is there any performance or structural thought behind that or is it yeah, just sort of Yeah, it's about the, the volume of air that goes through it. And then we always want to keep the air obviously cold, which goes down into the fender and it's just a way to make it look cool and you know tie it all together. The design and everything that went behind it, you know, was very intense. But if you had to make this out of metal, I mean, it would take like the best metal guy two months to do all this. Right, yeah. We can do this in CAD in a couple of days. We can machine it in a week and we can have parts in like two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is. Wow. And if it ever gets crashed or we build another one, it's a scalable model and it's using technology. And one thing I always want to tell 
kids, younger generation. It's okay to be craftsmen and tradesmen to work with your hands. I can't express enough for this next generation to get into composites, get into design, because the industry really needs it. You know, everybody can go into marketing or go into sales, and that stuff's great too. True craftsmen, you know, we need more of those guys born every day. Well, I want to I wanna see what this thing looks like on the bottom. I've never been under a full carbon muscle car. I think we get this thing up on the lift and check out the suspension and how this all works. <laughs> The box chassis runs all the way front to back. We did it all in CAD. What's really interesting about it is the oil lines are inside of it because it's a dry sump system and oil on one side, fuel on the other. Oh, wow. And then yeah, these, dry yeah, sump pump right there. these are all laser cut and then TIG welded four sides and then ground all the way down. So, so this is 0% a stock frame? Yes, nothing. Okay. Yep. All right. Nothing remains 70 Charger anymore. Love the spline drive, sway bar. The, these mounts are massive. Yeah, we have really perfect bump steer. I'm dropping this down and we just put a logo in there. So that's all seed and seed in house. We use okay. roaster shop control arms. And then it's really cool daily. Dry sump, they make it for the 6.4. So we had to kind of oh, alter wow. it for the demon motor. So that worked I'm out. I'm sure this comes in handy a lot too because this car is so friggin' low. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Suspension-wise, was there much trial and error on how all of the, your spindle setup and your sway bar and your steering and everything is set yeah. up? C6 Corvette geometry on the control arms just dropped a little bit. We can do the bump steer in CAD and then get almost no bump steer. And then we're using the Penske shocks, so they're a great company and they helped us out. And these brakes are massive. What do we? What size brakes do we have front and rear? You know, 15.5, I think. Six pot in the front and four in the back, or? Yep. And then the uh, six speed out of the Hellcat meshed nice to the Demon engines, it's the same block. Yeah, the it's exhaust, really clean. The exhaust work here is really impressive. Like, look how nice it's tucked up in here. Oh, is this all, this is all carbon here? This looks like it's actually yeah, extra reinforcement a, or? Yeah, so we have a lava mat going over some aluminum. Basically the whole floor was made by us at Speedcore out of aluminum. Yeah, obviously the rails are steel. This is the rockers are carbon. So it's kind of the integration of three different materials all into one. Okay, even being under the car, you can't even see where the frame rails go because everything is so nicely fixed. Finished. This rail comes out to the edge and just kind of runs along and then there's aluminum sheet on top you know, yep. on top so of it. It runs parallel to the rocker here for strength. And then this is basically at the end of the day, your floor to just put your feet on and the frame keeps it structural. That trussing we talked about before supports the floor and the transmission. So really at the end of the day, this just keeps the dirt out and it gives cool. you a floor. Yeah, we got a nine inch with a four link and then just a cross link to keep it. Okay. Some cool. guys run, you know, a different kind of pan hard bar or. Yeah, that's what I was know, looking at. It took me, it took me so, by surprise because I was yeah. like, is that a three link? But it's, it's definitely kind of a, a diagonal link. What gear is in the back? A 370. Okay. Yeah. 370. Yeah. I mean, a six speed. Six speed, yeah. So it cruises really nice. Uh, what did you do to make way for these massive 345? Yeah, so the wheel tubs, tires. everything was uh, done on steel. It's just as wide as you can go. So yeah. Right now, a 345, you know, it's almost, what is it, 14 inches of width. So once they it's come insane. out with a wider one, you know, even better. But we still have plenty of clearance in there and it worked yeah, out well. And then back here, it looks like you have a really nicely finished fuel cell. Mm -hmm. And then the Peterson tank back here for the oil. So you change the oil here for the dry sump. And then on the other side. I would have side. never even noticed that. That's insane. <laughs> this is so clean. And then on the other side, uh, we have uh, Optima battery and uh, all the stereo stuff behind that. Oh, wow. So, okay. I don't know. I'm blown away by the fit and finish on everything on this car. It's honestly as beautiful on the underside as it is on the top side. So I am really pumped that I got the opportunity to look underneath this thing and check it out. Thanks so much for coming by, man. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Comment below if you want to see this thing at the burn yard on March 2nd at Irwindale, because now we have a space to do burnouts again. <laughs>